But this is, as I say, the league leaders, yeah. only side to have won all four of their games. And they're showing a real resilience to have gone behind like they did to Fulham, who actually, you know, caused them lots of problems in that game at the Emirates. Mikel Arteta will obviously be waking up this morning delighted by the test that they had with Fulham and the fact mm. that they could come back and win it. Yeah, and um, look, Arsenal started the game on the front foot immediately mm. and took it to Fulham. Couldn't break Fulham down. Um, fair play, Fulham played really, really well. And like you said, Nat, difficult team to play. And, you know, the first goal, I, I've got to say, Mitrovic would not have scored that over when he was last in the Premier League. He would not have scored that. Because now his work rate is far higher. He ends up, OK, look, it's a bad ball from Saka across the... You know, the, it starts badly because Saka's tried a literally a 40-yard pass across his own 18-yard box. Mm. Gabriel doesn't make the best of it. His control lets him down slightly, makes a mistake. Mitrovic is on to him. He's closing him down as quick as he can and gets his reward with a goal. Yeah. And that is the difference in Mitrovic from before being in the Premier League. He wouldn't have done that closing down. But what's been the difference then? Is it because it's well, a different been... Fulham, it's a different manager who believes in him? Well, Marco Silva has definitely got a very athletic team in there. Their two fullbacks run for fun. Tete and Robertson do brilliant for me. As it, and and how I mean when they got the result against Liverpool two two, they stopped teams in wide areas. Pauhina, who's come in, yeah. has done really well as well as, as a player d defensively. And they just fit in. They're a really well structured team that don't give you very little. Arsenal had to be at their best and look. One player that stood out, and I mean, he's like, he's so much like Kevin De Bruyne, who is Odegaard. His ability to pass the ball, move it. And, you know, you have to give a lot of credit there to Arteta because he had him in on loan. He didn't send him back. He made him his one of his primary um, recruitment. Mm. Well, you know, the one he wanted to bring through the door. And he's so gifted. And with that, Arsenal, you know, or a side that, now look like they can turn the game around. And look, they did this a couple of times last year, but I thought it was a big statement to make yesterday that they turned the game around, that they had been more dominant, but Fulham had made it difficult for them and ended up winning the game, which they'll be delighted with. The, at the atmosphere, you can tell. I, I said I've been at the Emirates the end of last season. It's completely different. You know, it's not the library at all. It's a very noisy, vocal... The, the, the fans of Arsenal really believe in their team. Mm -hmm. And that... You know, that is, you've seen it with Brentford, you know, at your club. I've seen it before. I've been part of teams where the fans just love their team. That's what Arsenal fans do. Yeah. There's a very different atmosphere at the Emirates now than yeah. there was a couple of seasons ago when it did feel as though it was very toxic. Even that relationship between the fans and the players, you, there was a real divide. Well, it's divide, yeah, yeah. Over, over players, over manager, even the owners. You know, yeah. so <laughs> everywhere you look, there was a problem. So just to go back onto Odegaard and what he brings to Arsenal, what is he, 23? He's their captain. He's unbelievably skillful. He's the Kevin De Bruyne of Arsenal for me. I, I, I don't and, think I then, could... But there's going to be more from him to come. Then. Oh, absolutely. He's got everything. His feet are so quick. He can play long passes, he can play short. He's hungry, wants to get goals. He, he does everything that you'd expect. And isn't a surprise to me that he was given the captain's armband because, to me, Tierney could have easily been that 18 months ago, the new captain of Arsenal. Mm -hmm. And I think they're, they're starting to find leaders within their group. And it, his performance is... Of, he's got everything. There isn't anything he can't do. I mean, he's, he has a hunger and desire in his game as well. Um, Odegaard is a really top talent. And, and that, again... To recognise, to take him from Real Madrid, he was a kid and left uh, Scandinavia to go and play football in Spain and didn't really get given an opportunity. And they were prepared to loan mm. him out and then sell him. Boy, it's either they've got some incredible, which they have Real Madrid as senior players, but they bought two young midfielders in, you know, to fill the void of Casemiro leaving. Yeah, you know. Camavinga is, is, is there and they bought the a lad from uh, Monaco. I can never pronounce his name, but I know he's a really good player. But they've brought in two midfielders. Tell me then, Arsenal top of the table. The start of the season, It's and it's still very early days, but perhaps people wouldn't have expected them to be in this position as they are, the, and the only side hmm. to have won all four of their games so far. From what you've seen of them, is this a team that could actually be challenging for the top four minimum? It's hard to... Look, we're into four games. It's really difficult to say, can Arsenal challenge for the title? I would say very much so Champions League spot. I think that's a pretty much 
I, I think they can do that. Mm-hmm. I thought last year, even when I've, I don't remember doing a piece about Arsenal that after they'd lost three games, that uh, this team and could go close to getting to Champions League. And they'd lost the first three games. I did a piece on about it because I felt Arteta knew the pathway to take Arsenal to where they need to be as a club. Um, and I think they're sort of there, It's but they've got some huge tests along the way now. I mean, their victory at the end of the season at Chelsea when they, they won 4-2. And, you know, I, by the way, Enkete came on yesterday and was superb. I'm delighted for him because this was a kid that got given a chance, weren't sure he was going to sign a new contract, and he did. He wanted to stay at Arsenal. And then he knew he was going to be left out and they'd probably bring in a, a player like Gabriel Jesus. He's done that and he stayed at the club. And his appetite when he came on, I thought, fair play to you, mm. Enkete. Yes, sir. your appetite, your manager is going to be delighted with you. Because he he knows you haven't sulked, got you know got your new deal now, and oh, I should be in the team. He's come on and tried to prove a point. I thought fantastic for Manchester mm. yesterday. Just a final word on, on Fulham. Then it's their first defeat of uh, the campaign, so their unbeaten start has come to an end. But you mentioned how different Mitrovic is this time around. Four goals he mm. scored already, which has surpassed what he did last time he was in the Premier League, which was just three. Admittedly, didn't play that much or as uh, as often under Scott Parker as he now seems to be doing under Marco Silva. From what you've seen of Fulham, are you thinking they can make a good fight of this? They can stay up from, oh, yeah, because they're showing all the capabilities that they have. Yeah, they, they can, Nat. And I would add to that, that as long as they don't lose their hunger and desire as a team and people switch off and Mitrovic works his socks off up front, they're, they're, they've got enough in there. They've got enough players that can cause you problems. And, and they look... I mean, Marco Silva seems to have... It, they, they don't look like the, the whole City team that he had. We were way too open, Marco Silvers. He didn't, you know, look like the Watford team and, and the Everton. They, he seems to have got more structure to this Fulham team. Mm. And look, they've invested heavily, as they do, Fulham. And I think they look a decent side. They do, yeah. And, I mean, they battered Liverpool, opening game of the season. Now, it's early doors. It can be very false positions for teams that come up. It can look like it's much rosier. But from what I've seen so far, four games in, you can't criticise Fulham in any shape or form. They've, they've done terrific. Yeah, certainly putting up a fight. Uh, and uh, it was their first defeat of the season, but they went ahead in that game at the Emirates. But in the end, it was Arsenal that came through to win that by two goals to one. And it means Arsenal remain at the top of the table, uh, having won four games out of four. And uh, just quickly getting the table up, they are two points clear of Manchester City and Brighton. The Sunday Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Sunday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.